Hello and welcome to Investing Confidential. All I'm hearing about, everyone's talking about uh, this massive amount of debt that the government's going to have to uh, go to the markets with because of this recent debt ceiling debacle. Uh, as you can see here, whether it's the Wall Street Journal or et cetera, you look at, you know, one trillion could be 1.3 trillion. Uh, everyone's worried. Oh, my God, it's could <clears throat> this could be a problem. This could be could cause interest rates to rise, et cetera, et cetera. Well, look, folks, I don't disagree. But if you've been listening to me, I've been telling you that that despite you know what everyone's talking about inflation coming down that's not that's not going to solve the problem we have got a serious problem on our hands okay and interest rates are not going down anytime soon okay they're not going down it's because either inflation is sticky or we've got you know outside things happening we're printing tons of money and and this and this big trillion dollar debt they lose that they talk about uh, I mean, folks this is a sideshow another another sideshow OK, now, sure, I get that it's potentially disruptive, but, you know, I'm going to tell you why right now, while, you know, why this is not to worry about. I mean, look, are rates going down? No, no, the Fed is not going to cut rates. OK, they can't cut rates. Inflation is too is too high. It's too sticky. But I wouldn't worry about this. This, you know, this is, again, another sideshow, because what's going to happen here, folks, I'm going to give you a term that you've probably never heard before, but you're going to hear again down the road. And just remember, when you hear this term, when everyone's talking about this term, think about little old me, okay? It's called financial repression, okay? Financial repression. Okay, what is financial repression? Basically, financial repression is what we call something where, you know, you have, a, you have a, an entity, in this case, a government, okay, forcing it's banks to basically finance. This is what's been going on in Japan, for, forcing the banks to finance this growth. So what's happening? What's happening in Japan? Japan floats trillions, billions upon trillions of dollars or, or yen, and in term, in this case, dollars of debt to finance itself. And who buys that debt? The banks. What banks? Government banks. Okay. It it, it sounds ridiculous, but this is the case. So the government, knowing full well that outside entities, okay, like in our case in the U.S., where we have, you know, you're not going to have Chinese have stopped buying treasuries, you know, three years ago, okay. Just, just face it, don't the Chinese are not are not financing us anymore, okay. You've got Japan, which is pulling back. I sh I showed you that in videos in the past. Japan is pulling back. Europe's not going to finance anymore. So, who's going to finance? Who's going to buy all this trillion dollars of debt? This is what this is what the talking heads are talking about. Folks, it's going to be us. It's going to be you, you with your deposits. The, you're going to see J.P. Morgan, Citibank, which are essentially government banks, by the way, and all other banks. They're going to buy this debt. Okay, this is what they call financial repression. The government's going to say behind the scenes, "Hey, you need to buy this debt. You have no other choice. We need to finance this, or we're going to have." Oh, the debt. Oh, we're going to have default. All the so this is this is again part of the sideshow. The government printing money, the government, you know, just, just be nilly willy, just spending money like crazy, and again forcing our banks, your banks, you your savings, your hard earned money to buy this this debt, which is a joke. Okay, because they can't inflate it away. They know that. They tried to inflate it away, by the way. That's how most countries around the world, where they have big debt problems, like Brazil, okay, what do they do? They inflate it away. And they destroy the value of their currency. Well, they tried that here. They couldn't do it. Okay, inflation was out of control. They didn't care for a while. That's why they kept telling you that it was transitory. Okay, that's exactly why they told you that. But they realized that. You can't inflate when you're the when you're the base currency. You can't inflate it away, and the U.S. is going to continue to be the base currency for a while. But so the bottom line is, folks, financial repression is a word you're going to hear again down the road. And remember, you heard it here first, okay? Because we're you are going to buy this debt. You're you know, Ray Dalio, all these guys talking about, oh, it's, it's a problem. No, 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 it's not a problem because you're going to buy it through your banks. 
Okay, and what's what's the cause of all this? What's what's the ramifications? I told you before, I've been saying it again. This debt, US dollar, excuse me, the US government credit rating will be downgraded. It's inevitable. Absolutely inevitable. And here, here, here are the results. Okay, first you got look, look what's going on today. Credit card. Credit card rates. The, remember, I told I talked to you, I'm not gonna keep rehashing everything, but we talked about credit card balances being a trillion dollars. That's your money. Your bar people are borrowing money to support their their lifestyle. This is insane. Okay, and why are the banks doing it? They're making a lot of money. And here's why. Look at the rates. Look at these credit card rates that you're that anyone who is financing their lifestyle is being charged. Okay. It's it's outrageous. This goes back 30 years. This goes back 40 years, folks. 40 years. The highest rates ever. This is absurd. Okay, banks are printing money. They have to because they're going to have to buy this trillion dollars of debt the U.S. is selling. This is all a game, folks. It's all a game. Okay, here, look at look at mortgages. Okay, th these are these are mortgage mor mortgage index. Uh, nobody's buying mortgages. Okay, it, 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 it's gone. The, the mortgages the mortgage rates are just too high. Okay, way too high. And here, I mean, this is this chart should shock you, folks. Absolutely shock you, because we have known that thirty-year mortgage payments have rise over time. They sink, they rise, they sink. But look at since this pandemic. And again, I keep saying the pandemic was an inflection point, but it was it was it, it, it's something that is going to reverse. I think it's all going to reverse. But look at today, the highest. In the history of this country and the world, by the way, 30-year mortgage payments. Actually, it is the world because nobody has 30-year mortgage. We're the only morons who have 30-year mortgage payments. And this is why housing is so expensive, because we have 30-year mortgage. If they, if like every other country, they average about 10 years. If we cut mortgage payments, mortgage rates at 10 years, or mortgage financing at 10 years, real estate in this country would collapse. Collapse. Okay, so look at this. You can't get around this, folks. This is a, this, this, I'm going to keep showing this because it should shock you. This cannot continue. Okay. This cannot continue. And the, and the only way it's going to continue is that real estate prices are going to go significantly lower. They have to. There's no other choice because as you, as, as, as you, you're seeing, these interest rates are not going to go much lower. Okay. Mortgage rates may come down to 5% may come down to 5%. That's about the lowest they're going to go. Because that's the, that's the average. When I bought my first house, I think I paid a 7% mortgage, just like today. People are shocked. Oh, that's because over the last 10 years and five years, we've had this ridiculous zero rate policy started by Ben Bernanke, that fool. Okay, he's an absolute fool. He should go down in the, in the books as the guy who destroyed this country. Okay, because this country is being destroyed by that policy, and it continues today. Okay, so, you know, what's next? Okay, what's next? Well, we got problems here, folks, because as you can see here, we have the stock market, which is what we're talking about today, or, or asset prices, uh, equity, stock market is part of asset prices, are just way overvalued versus our GDP. Now, we're talking about going back, again, 40, 50 years. We can go back even farther. And probably the last time we saw this was in 1927, but I'm not going to get into that. But equity, you know, stocks in general are so overvalued versus what this country's worth, or the, our GDP. Okay. And it's not just stocks, it's bonds, it's real estate, but stocks are by far the most overvalued they've ever been in the history of this country, maybe with the exception of 1927, versus what this country's worth. This is a huge country. Okay, and there's no way that stocks should be where they are today. No chance. And again, as I told you before, they're driven really by five or 10, 10, 10 companies. We're, we're, we're at the nifty 10. We used to be nifty 50. Look it up again from the 70s. This is the nifty 10. It's all going to reverse. Finally here, what's the opportunity? The opportunity set is this, folks. 
we, as I told you, we're in financial repression. We are entering just an absolute debasing of all, of all currencies, not just the dollar. Okay, so how do you protect yourself? Well, as you can see here, going back again, another 50-year chart, you need to have exposure to commodities. You can make it gold. You can, you know, whatever it is, you need to have exposure to commodities. We are at all-time lows. All-time lows, the commodities versus the S&P. The U.S. stock market is so overvalued right now, and it's overvalued because of 10 tech companies. Okay, the trade of the century, the trade of the decade, of the next two decades, most probably the most impossible trade to hold would be to short Apple, Microsoft, all these big tech companies, and go long gold or any kind of commodity. Sounds crazy, I agree. But over the long term, that trade will work. 100% will work. Will it, be, will it be possible to hold onto that trade if you're a risk-adverse person? No. Impossible. Impossible for the average person to hold on to. But that's the trade. That's the trade. So financial repression, you've heard it here first. It's coming. Okay? We're going to buy. The, don't, don't get worried about who's going to buy the debt. No, no. We're going to buy the debt. You're going to buy the debt because our banks are going to buy the debt. But it's not going to stop the inevitable debt downgrade, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So traders take advantage of it. A lot of opportunities. Market cannot, market still too many bears out there. Too many bears. The market's not going down. It's going higher. Trending, let's say, flat to higher. But it's only going higher if you own 10 stocks. The rest of the market is done, flat to down. So as an investor, buy commodities. And be very careful out there.